thank you everybody and thank you Joseph, Ricky and Flores. Thank you for joining us of this uh, very meaningful panel today. And this uh, one I think, yeah, this year I think the FinTech Week has seen more people to attend in person. So um, it's a good forum. So maybe the first question we want to talk about is this topic. This topic is about uh, pushing boundary and reaping benefit. So I think maybe for scene setting, I think let the audience know what we are uh, going on now. So maybe Joseph, can you talk about what is the nation's government push to promote fintech uh, in Hong Kong? Sure, thank you, Enoch. And again, it's great seeing you all at um, Fintech Week again. Well, uh, let me start by sharing with you, of course, the latest initiative on virtual assets. Because um, this morning, we issued a policy statement on the development of virtual assets in Hong Kong. The statement sets out the government's policy towards developing a vibrant sector and ecosystem for virtual assets here in Hong Kong. It explained in detail our vision and approach, regulatory regimes, thoughts on investor exposures, and also our pilot projects to embrace the technological benefits and financial innovations brought by virtual assets. And the government and our regulators are also exploring a number of pilot projects to test the technological benefits brought by virtual assets and the application in financial markets. So these uh, pilot projects include um, the NFT issuance for Hong Kong FinTech Week, and a green bond um, tokenization for the government green bond, and also uh, the e Hong Kong dollar. Well, in general, in Hong Kong, as a leading international financial center in Asia, we are open and inclusive towards the global community of innovators and engaging in virtual asset business. So the government, in conjunction with our regulators, are working towards providing a more facilitating environment for promoting sustainable and responsible development of the virtual asset sectors in Hong Kong. And we will continue to put in place timely and necessary uh, guardrails to mitigate any actual all potential risks in line with international standards so that uh, the virtual asset business here can develop and thrive in a sustainable manner. Thank you, Joseph. So next, Wiki, you are Senior Executive of City. Um, so can you share your uh, uh, view on the, um, what is the latest development in the banking center in terms of FinTech? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, we have gone through many different stages and uh, starting from not having much to having some functionalities a little bit more to where we are. So it's really a very good question as to what's next then um, with evolving customer needs, higher expectation, and advancement in technology. I'm sure the next wave is going to be very exciting. And technology is always behind the scene as a key driver. It tells us what's possible. What are the poss possibilities out there? And, um, when we talk about technology, one of the things that came to my mind is Web3. Uh, we all know that it's going to be uh, blockchain, DeFi, um, metaverse, etc. And uh, with the advancement of technology, we will think about what we can make use of that. Let, let me maybe talk about a little bit about blockchain. Uh, as a technology, I think it's here to stay. Um, disregard the development of the other initiative. And then uh, with blockchain, a lot of things at the back will be changing in terms of the operation flow, in terms of settlement, real-time processing. A lot of things are going to change the customer's experience and their expectation as well. So this is one particular aspect. And other than that, um, metaverse. Metaverse is also another one, again, being possible, suddenly become possible. And um, for example, in our case, in city, we, are we, we have um, developed a digital trend in Metaverse in which where you can find our um, uh, city global wealth center in K11. So customer, before going to the physical branch, they can actually go to the Metaverse and take a look. Then you will see the the connection between the online and offline is going to be more related, more closely connected. And again, this will give us a lot of interesting possibility so that we can serve the customer better and also educate our customer how to interact, how to engage us, re-engage them more closely. 
And um, of course, talking about the um, uh, uh, next wave, I don't think I can leave this topic without mentioning about cybersecurity. Uh, uh, banking industry is one of that uh, being affected or related. Uh, this particular one, uh, we are very conscious about that, and then we are also investing in tools, technology, so that we can have preventive and also detective measures. Again, the client education piece is one thing we need to work very closely with the clients jointly, with the regulator as well. So I'll pause here, but then at least I see the next phase to be very exciting and also uh, give us a lot of uh, different challenges and opportunities. That's all very, very good. And then, Forrest, you are a senior executive for Tencent, a very big uh, technology company. Can you share your, um, what is the next big thing in your sector? Yeah, sure. Uh, first, thank you, for, thank you for having me here. <laughs> it's so great to see, you know, after the, the, the few years in COVID, you know, uh, Hong Kong has uh, such a major event again with so many uh, uh, participants. Uh, seems like the old time is coming back. So uh, in our uh, businesses, so one thing that we have noticed recently is uh, the proliferation of a cross-border B2C e-commerce. Uh, there's a report sent by NDRC yesterday, and uh, the, the transaction volume just uh, overpassed uh, about a 2 trillion RMB per year for overseas, for cross-border B2C, including import and export. Hmm. And we believe there's a very uh, strong demand and uh, business opportunity uh, within that, because uh, over the last uh, uh, a decade, you know, Tencent has uh, been working very hard to build a, a payment infrastructure in China, uh, uh, in mainland, uh, uh, basically to have the frictionless and the low-cost uh, payment experience. Uh, China merchants can enjoy lower than 0.6% uh, transaction cost for their payment. We believe uh, the, the cross-border merchants ought to be able to enjoy similar uh, low cost and uh, experience. And we, we see there are very strong demand and to develop products and, uh, and services to tailor for that demand. Well, now we have a government official joining our panel. So, Wiki and Forrest, can each of you give some wish list to what you want the Hong Kong government to do to how you are set to uh, doing better in your fintech development? So, maybe ladies first. Wiki, can you talk about uh, your wish list first? Okay, it's a golden opportunity for us, uh, <laughs> for us and I to talk to government officials. Um, I think that one, before I share with you my wish list, uh, one of the things I have to say is the government and also a lot of bodies have uh, a very committed and also made a lot of effort in driving the digital agenda. So we recognize that and then we see that. Um, uh, very appreciative of that. Uh, if we may have a wish list, I think I will start with data. So uh, data is very important uh, in, in, in how to serve the clients and how to run the business more efficiently. Um, I use the uh, KYC database as one example. If we can have a common um, centralized customer uh, KYC database, uh, the customer experience will be better in terms of the onboarding. Also for us, uh, petitioners are players in the industry. We can also make the sales process or the engagement process more efficient. Um, so this is one. And along with that, also about data is, for example, another piece we can think about centralized is the fraud database. If we can have a fraud database, we can join hands and combat the, uh, against the cyber criminals together. Again, it will save costs. It will make ourselves more efficient. Um, so I would say these two. Uh, as an uh, example about data. The other one, again, I'm a little bit greedy, but allow me to have one more wish list before I pass on to Forex. Um, I would like to see the um, fast tracking of the open banking 3 point, uh, 3, phase three, because it's on, is, is around the corner, it's coming, and again, it's in the agenda of the regulator. Uh, it's about sharing as well. The whole concept, similar to the database thing, is about sharing of information. How can we have common definition where the banks, upon the customer consent, we can share information? Again, it's for the better good of the industry. It will help us enhance the client experience, and uh, it will just make our banking industry more efficient. Uh, we see good example outside Hong Kong as well. I, I think this is one of the things, uh, it's on the agenda. I want to see it happen faster and then hopefully yielding better results. 
So I, I, I will give the other chance to Forrest. Okay, so yeah. Forrest, what's your wish list? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Actually, I first, uh, before my wish list, I really want to echo Vicky's uh, 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 point on data, especially on the KYC side. Because we see if there's a uh, government-sponsored infrastructure that can help every industry player, especially now if you want to do KYC, uh, you know, we need our users to shoot, uh, to, to uh, video their um, uh, ID card from different angles, try to use technology to decipher whether this ID card is, uh, is authentic or not. That's actually a very hard uh, experience for the user. However, if there's a, a uh, a common database that we can very easily to verify at a particular individual whether he is uh, authentic or not. That would greatly help the online experience for, for all the individuals. So I very much want to echo that point. So on my own <laughs> wish list, uh, also on behalf of the, the, the probably the industry, I, I actually I see, I see government uh, is already moving towards that direction. For example, uh, stronger interconnection with the uh, uh, mainland uh, capital markets, you know, through the Stock Connect, through the Online Wealth Management Connect, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I see that's great, and I just hope you know, that speed and that uh, expansion can be even more stronger and uh, forceful. Because uh, the way that I see it is uh, Hong Kong has a such unique position as a hub for asset management and wealth management. Mm -hmm. and, uh, China uh, investors are, are becomes richer and richer, and the global asset allocation is becoming a strong demand for them. So how can we enable that process to be even more proliferating, regardless whether it's through you know, RMB denominated uh, investment tool or through the mutual market access? So I really like you know, the recent uh, uh, chief executive's uh, policy, policy address. I think that's exactly on the direction. But I, I hope you know, maybe you know, for initiatives like uh, you know, uh, cross-border uh, wealth management connect. You know, if uh, they can open to more different types of financial institutions, not just the banks. You know, for example, mutual fund distribution companies, uh, brokerage firms, uh, uh, or online wealth management platforms. You know, I think if we can uh, uh, elicit and uh, attract a lot of different players in this market, we will make it bigger. And especially, I think it's a it's a really fundamental. It's really important for Hong Kong because as a capital market, it's really a you know two sided uh, two sided network effect. You know, if you have more investors, you have more more uh, you know uh, assets, the, the market will be more 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 proliferating. So that's really one one of our 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 uh, wish list. The other one probably is uh, has something to do with uh, uh, the, the 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 service that we're providing in Hong Kong here, uh, which is a uh, uh, WeChat Pay Hong Kong. You know, it is a mobile payment tool, and uh, it's a, uh, growing very well. We have uh, more than a million users and uh, more than you know, 150,000 merchants. But uh, we just hope the interoperability with the uh, mainland uh, payment network can be even more seamless. We hope our mobile payment users in Hong Kong, they can enjoy the same services from all the, you know, uh, uh, mainland uh, merchants, regardless of whether JD or Meituan, you know, if they can pay directly, if they can have a small amount transfer with uh, uh, mainland uh, their friends uh, and families in mainland, uh, you know, through the, the payment network, you know, uh, in a very seamless way, you know, that would be great. I think the, from the interoperability side, if we can, you know, further reduce the, 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 the barrier and uh, further enhanced the interoperability among the various payment networks, I believe that will also benefit greatly to the, to the local users. Mm -hmm. So Joseph, how will you respond to the um, wish list? Thank you. Well, I think your original question is about what's the most important uh, to provide a good environment. And I have to say the most important for the, from a government perspective is always to listen, uh, get our eyes and ears open to understand industry needs. So um, well, we usually do it in um, meetings and different forums and apparently also on the public panel on the FinTech Week is a great occasion as well. Um, well, in general, of course, from the government perspective, we understand that we need to apply a multi-pronged approach to promote FinTech. So be that regulations, uh, infrastructure, connectivity with other markets and, uh, and, uh, and jurisdictions, and also um, nurturing talents, um, and, uh, and also the rec uh, regulations to be up updated, so on and so forth. And specific to what uh, Vicky and Frost mentioned, maybe I'll pick a few points. Um, first, 
about the new products and services. Um, well, for sure, uh, we want to encourage the industry to promote uh, to uh, to uh, develop more new products and services through fintech. And we also understanding um, funding is uh, essential. Uh, support from the government is also very important. So that's why we have already launched uh, two rounds of fintech proof of concept subsidy schemes over the past two years. So where we provide subsidies to financial institutions uh, for partnering with um, fintech companies. Um, actually, sorry, we provide subsidies to fintech companies to partner with financial institutions to, pro to conduct proof of concept on uh, new ideas. And a new round of the scheme is underway at the moment, and we have actually expanded uh, the range um, can be uh, uh, eligible under the scheme. So we hope that can help uh, promote more fintech um, innovations. Uh, Vicky mentioned about um, data, which is crucial to the financial sector, of course. Um, and as uh, she's mentioned, actually, uh, Hong Kong MA, uh, the FinTech 2025 um, strategy already outlines um, different initiatives. One of those is a commercial data interchange, CDI, uh, which officially was launched um, um, just last week. So this landmark data infrastructure project uh, in Hong Kong um, facilitates enterprises to share their data with banks through a central platform thereby enabling the trade to access more convenient finance services. And we understand it's just the beginning. We won't stop here because in terms of a centralized platform, in terms of promoting database to improve custom experience and, and, and KYC, that could a bit more, uh, a lot more that we can do. But we have a good start um, on CDI and definitely will keep, uh, keep uh, pushing further. I think in terms of the banking industry, the other initiative, of course, it's the implementation of the Open ABR, API to provide more innovative financial services and customer experience. Um, I hear what um, Vicky and Forrest said. Uh, I, I was from the banking sector before, so back then we always had saying, uh, when should this be done? It should have been done yesterday. Uh, um, as the government uh, definitely will work full force to achieve um, those uh, objectives um, as soon as uh, possible. Um, I know I'm eating up a lot of time. The last thing I would like to also say about the importance of providing an environment for fintech development is that um, legal and regulatory framework and regime is very important. Um, as fintech develops new innovation, uh, new products and solutions, certain traditional functions or products will be displaced. Uh, there will be um, new ideas and something new custom experience to, um, to be provided. So updating our uh, regulatory environment is very important. So as I um, said at the earlier question, we have just launched a uh, policy statement right, on virtual assets. And also, if you look at our track record, we were among the first in Asia uh, to launch a virtual bank license, uh, licensing for virtual insurers, uh, so on and so forth. So uh, definitely, we will continue to, uh, to to be staying ahead of the game in terms of providing a more conducive regulatory environment for the business to develop on a sustainable manner. So I think this session is talking about opportunities. And many of us will know that the great opportunity is in the Greater Bay Area. Tencent is basically headquartered in Samchan. That is also just our neighbor. So can each of you share your view? What, what do you think the opportunity can give us from the Greater Bay Area? So maybe um, Forrest, you start because you, you're from Samchan, right? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really passionate about the opportunities in GBA. Okay, so with a 86 million population, about 1.6 trillion US dollar, or about 10 trillion RMB GDP, you know, this is a really great area to have any kind of a business to 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 to, to a business opportunity to tap into. Especially, we feel the uh, regulators and the, and the and the governments, you know, from the GBA area, regardless whether it's a uh, uh, you know uh, mainland uh, regulators or. Hong Kong or Macau, you know, they are actually working very closely to create a very mm -hmm. cohesive environment for the business to be able to tap into different opportunities. Specifically, I would still like to uh, mention this uh, 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 Wealth Management Connect mm -hmm. uh, uh, opportunity mm -hmm. because, uh, because I think the design actually is a very elegant. You know, it's a RMB a closed looped uh, uh, design, you know, it allowed the China mm -hmm. investor to tap into the uh, uh, overseas assets and enjoy the 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 the, the, the benefit. Uh, but also, you know, um, it's a closed loop system, so uh, so so reduce the, the the risk from the foreign exchange standpoint. Uh, it's just a, you know, currently I feel 
you know, the, 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 a lot of the user experience side, especially related to you know, open account you know, or KYC, <laughs> et cetera, is still suboptimal. But uh, we hope that uh, you know, we can work together with the regulators on, on, the, uh, on, on both sides, uh, you know, with, the, with our partners uh, in the banking industry to really streamline, use technology mm -hmm. to streamline the experience while maintain or even enhance the risk, risk management and the risk control. I think we are able to do that because uh, you know, through our uh, you know, over, over a decade of uh, servicing you know, the, 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 uh, the, the, the payment uh, users uh, in mainland, we have developed a very strong technology on identify potential risks uh, on, the, on the fraud side, on the you know, AML side, et cetera. So we, we are very willing to you know, use our technology to help uh, enhance and, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, expansion of that kind of business. Mm -hmm. So the key, what's your view? Um, before talking about the GBA opportunities, I want to follow up on what uh, the point Forex mentioned about Wealth Connect. I'm a strong advocate of the Wealth Connect. Uh, it just gives us huge opportunity to go beyond the 7 million um, population we have in Hong Kong. Very, in the proximity, you see a bigger population, bigger opportunity. So I'm a strong advocate behind it. Um, since the launch, we had experienced a lot. At least in our case, in city, we partner with Guangfa Bank. Uh, since the launch, the operation has been very smooth. The infrastructure is there. We always say, but, <laughs> but if we can have a little bit more opening <laughs> yes. up of the scheme, mm -hmm. uh, more enhancement in the process, um, the client experience and the whole scheme probably can have even more to contribute to the development of the GBA uh, uh, whole area. Um, I think um, Forex mentioned a bit of that, and then if I'm to add on in terms of the product range, uh, the investment amount, uh, the remote opening of accounts, and the surfacing as well, uh, instead of um, uh, doing just the execution piece of it, I think all these can contribute to make the, uh, the, the Wealth Connect uh, even more exciting and, and, and um, encouraging to a lot of the uh, customers. Um, so other than the Wealth Connect, another point I want to make is about the, the synergy we can drive between the cities uh, within the GBA area. Hong Kong, we are international. We have a very special place within the GBA. Uh, we have the very well-developed financial system and also uh, legal system. Our people have the experience. We have the uh, international mindset as well. Uh, whereas different cities have their different roles to play and different strengths. Uh, for example, Shenzhen, mm. so advanced uh, in technology and innovation. We have um, our uh, 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 Guangzhou, who is, which is very uh, uh, specialized and experienced in operation as well. Each city, you will see that we have a role to play to make the GBA a better and a bigger one. So I, I, I do feel that we have opportunities ahead, and together with technology advancement, I'm sure we can, we can do better in this area. Mm -hmm. So Joseph, how do you think GBA can provide big opportunity for Hong Kong startup and companies? And our wish list as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, of course, of course. Well, um, two things. First, in general, right? Um, as, as Vicky pointed out very clearly, Hong Kong on one hand, uh, we are the, the leading international financial center in Asia and also China's international financial center. Um, on the other hand, we have the preferential access to mainland markets, so it's an ideal location uh, for fintech companies to target the Greater Bay Area's um, uh, potential and, um, and business opportunities. Well, um, flowing back to the key item on the wish list per se about uh, Wealth Management Connect. Well, first of all, um, we understand that uh, Wealth Management Connect um, launched like over a year or so, and we have get a lot of feedback. And what we are working towards is uh, in terms of uh, product range, in terms of the um, uh, customer experience, in terms of the participation of a uh, variety of financial institutions, and also in terms of the quota, we have uh, uh, received a wide range of feedback. And we're working towards to modify the scheme. And if you look at the history of different Connect schemes, be that Stock Connect, Bond Connect or so, uh, you will see that uh, usually we launch it first um, to make sure it operates smoothly, as Vicky mentioned, on a steady manner. And then we collect more feedback and we'll continue to, um, uh, continue to upgrade it or continue to modify it with uh, 
wider product range or with more participation with, um, with a deeper quota as well. So definitely we are work working towards that. Um, in general, I also want to say that definitely the Wealth Management Connect is a prime example, right, of how Hong Kong can help international businesses to target the uh, mainland um, opportunities. Um, the other thing that we're working on, for example, is the after sales service of, uh, for insurance products, right? Uh, we are working with the mainland regulators to allow um, the opening of um, after sales service in the mainland cities within Greater Bay Area so that they can serve the insurance products offered by Hong Kong um, in terms of claims, in terms of inquiries, in terms of renewal, so on and so forth. And in general, uh, in uh, taking a step back from the specific scheme, I want to highlight that uh, while we know there are opportunities, the government understands that we have a role to play to, to facilitate the further penetration into Greater Bay Area for our fintech mm -hmm. companies. So, uh, for example, we are providing uh, fintech companies a one-stop platform at the moment for them to conduct pilot trials for cross-boundary fintech initiatives concurrently. In both, uh, in both locations, which will help expedite the uh, product launch and also help reduce the cost. Um, also, we are offering comprehensive assistance for fender company stationed in Hong Kong to expand the business um, in the mainland, uh, including providing information of the policy, regulatory information, as, uh, assisting them to promote their business with potential clients, and also providing uh, cross-boundary data applications, office leasing, so on and so forth. And the other uh, one I would like to highlight is that as announced in the policy address uh, by the chief executive earlier this month, we are also devising now an online platform to connect fintech companies in Hong Kong to the users, partners, and investors in markets within Hong Kong and the mainland, and also beyond uh, mainland uh, in Asia, like Southeast Asia, Asia or so. And we have scheduled that platform to be launched uh, later this year. So definitely, we understand the opportunities there. We understand our role to help facilitate cross-boundary uh, fintech development, and we're very committed uh, to um, doing so uh, with the fintech community together. Mm -hmm. Well, we definitely see a lot of uh, opportunity in the Greater Bay Area, but unfortunately, the pandemic has mean now the broader with the uh, between Hong Kong and the mainland city has not yet reopened. So, um, how do you think about this pandemic? Has it slowed down your fintech development, or is the other way around? Because we know the social distancing actually I encourage more people to do online banking. I mean, they're paying more online game. <laughs> so, um, maybe Ricky, can you share your view with us? Mm. Uh, the pandemic definitely has reshaped the whole world and also uh, uh, changed our behavior very drastically, including the way customer engage us, we engage them, uh, uh, the way we live, we work, and we bank all have been very different from before, and, uh, but in a very positive way. Uh, you, can you imagine how much money, cost, time we have spent in old days? to educate customer using our digital platform and using digital capabilities. But because of pandemic, basically, customers suddenly become very eager to find out how they can do transactions remotely and how they can uh, uh, have different ways of banking. Um, so this is very encouraging. It's a positive uh, 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 um, uh, side effect of the uh, pandemic. And if we look at our portfolio, for example, um, right now, over 85% of our customers, they're digital active. And then it's not just about viewing transactions or uh, checking out things. It's doing transactions, close to 80% of them, they are financial active. So, um, you know, you can imagine how many customers are suddenly becoming digital uh, uh, savvy and then they are willing to use these transactions. Um, uh, on the mobile and on online. Uh, in fact, if you look at mobile payment, you mentioned about payment before. A lot of customers change their payment methods to mobile. And uh, the mobile transactions, again, increase hugely in our portfolio as well. So all these, uh, one important thing is, these behavior is not switching back. Uh, they are going to stay there. And then it's us now, the ball is on our court as regards how we can enhance the behavior, how it can further improve the experience so that they can stay on and then enjoy that digital uh, uh, experience on our platform. 
And uh, I, I, I really look forward to having even more possibility and also more engagement with the customers digitally. Mm -hmm. So Forrest, what's your view? Yeah, uh, I, I, I live in Hong Kong, so just my personal, personal experience over the last uh, couple of years, my usage of uh, Hong Kong TV Mall, Deliveroo, <laughs> Food Panda, <laughs> <laughs> has grown exponentially, right? Yeah, I hope you're using our co-brand card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully you are using WeChat in Hong Kong as well. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so I, I think that, that's just natural, right? Because uh, you, once you start using those online services, you feel it's so convenient and it's so good. It's a, you don't need to wait in the line. You just sit at home and then the, the, the products will be deli delivered, etc. Et it's just uh, natural, you know, people. I think it actually, from online commerce perspective, uh, COVID uh, actually helped the acceleration of that. I think from fintech uh, uh, industry player perspective, that gives us more uh, responsibility to really uh, manage our services well, because more people will do their transactions online, more people will open accounts online. So really, you really need to have a better solution to manage the KYC, manage the online fraud, manage the the, 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 the AML issues, et cetera, right? So, so, so we feel, on one, on one side, we feel you know, the, 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 the demand is, uh, is, uh, is growing very fast. On the other hand, how can we accelerate in, uh, the development of our technology in order to service such an ex explosive of demand and uh, still maintain or even make the user experience better? I think that's sort of our both uh, opportunity and responsibility. And, uh, and uh, we, we very dearly feel that you know, um, as long as we keep identifying the critical issues and we keep uh, have a focus from technology to solve those issues, you know, uh, the world is <laughs> becoming better and better. <laughs> So um, finally, I would like each of you to share your view because we are now closing to the end of 2022, uh, 2023, it's just next, yeah, in the near future, okay? So what, what do you think is the major uh, opportunity and challenge next year? And maybe for a longer term horizon, what do you think is the major catalyst can help uh, Hong Kong's FinTech to develop further? Yeah. And so maybe Joseph, can you share your view first? Okay, sure, thank you. Um, the major, I think one major challenge to us in Hong Kong on FinTech, but also globally, is of course um, talents. Because after all, if you look at the uh, last few years, FinTech globally has developed very quickly. So if one wants to say, hey, I'm looking for someone in FinTech with five, ten years experience. If you look back the scale and the size of the market five, ten years ago, it was much smaller. So it's difficult for look, to look for um, people with enough experience in that angle. So definitely it's a challenge to everybody. Um, Hong Kong is not alone. Well, on that, of course, uh, locally, we have um, offered a lot of different training uh, to groom our local talents. At the, mo at the moment, um, multiple, uh, multiple universities in Hong Kong are offering FinTech programs on a bachelor level or master level uh, to groom our students. For the existing financial practitioners in the traditional um, financial industry, uh, we have also rolled out the financial practitioners um, fintech training program to help offer training. And apart from nurturing the local talents, of course, it's important to attract the uh, talents from uh, other places, locations, from mainland and overseas as well. Uh, FinTech is actually uh, on our talent list at the moment, meaning that um, FinTech talent coming to Hong Kong, they would enjoy uh, fa uh, facilitation uh, for immigration, under immigration policy. And also, as I mentioned uh, by Chief Executive announced um, in the policy address, we have also launched the Top Talent uh, Pass Scheme. Um, so the top talents um, uh, either uh, graduated from the top 100 universities globally, or those uh, who are, have been making um, 2.5 million Hong Kong dollars equivalent of any salary or so uh, can come to Hong Kong um, without a job offer, uh, get a visa to stay here uh, as well. So you can see that um, definitely talent is a key challenge and we're trying to address it. Um, I know time is of essence. Uh, one thing about opportunity that I'd like to mention is ESG. Um, definitely ESG is here to stay, it's getting bigger and bigger because it's important. We mobilize profit capital to uh, combat climate change and everybody is on board. But how to combine FinTech 
and ESG to further improve the efficiency of mobilizing profit capital to uh, combat climate change. I think it's a common goal. It can be done. It will be a big opportunity to Hong Kong. And that's why the tokenization uh, of the government green bond is also one step we want to showcase to the market that uh, we are definitely taking uh, these opportunities uh, very seriously. Thank you. So, Wiki, can you share your What do you think is the major um, challenge and opportunity next year? Um, I, want, I, I don't want to repeat what, uh, Joseph, you mentioned about talent. Definitely, this is on the top of the list. Mm -hmm. How can we get more talent? How can we go, get talents of technology background, technology expertise, and also an entrepreneurial mindset so that you can, we can push ourselves forward? So I'm not going to touch on the talent. Uh, the challenge and opportunities uh, both lie in how can we simplify and streamline our process. Uh, here we are at FinTech Week, we are talking about using technology. We are not using technology to add more control and make the process even more complicated. We are, how, we are using technology to simplify the process, making the life of our customers easier, making the life of petitioners easier. Um, so I see this as one of the opportunities, especially we are open-minded people in Hong Kong, and then we always look upon others to see, hey, where's the best practices we can learn from other markets, from within China, from outside China, where can we bring the best of everywhere, and then set up a framework, policies, that can make the banking industry and also the entire Hong Kong development faster and more efficient. I see that streamlining and the uh, the, the, the simplification being the opportunities for us. So for us, last but not the least, what's your view for the uh, major opportunity and challenge in 2023? Yeah, I, 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 I see a short one and a long-term one. <laughs> a a, a short-term short one is st still related to wealth management or investment. No, because uh, today, you know, the, the interest, uh, the, the risk-free interest, uh, you know, in Hong Kong is almost, uh, you know, uh, uh, double where it was before, right? It uh, is uh, anywhere between 4% to 5%. So for any Wealth Connect uh, investors, given it's tailored towards the low and the medium risk investors, this is a great opportunity for them to participate. And also the Stock Connect, uh, you know, if the uh, RMB denominated uh, uh, stock investment tool has uh, become more mature, you know, it is a great way for uh, mainland investors to tap into the, the, the Hong Kong uh, uh, stocks, given the valuation is at a such an attractive level. So I think that's a short-term uh, catalyst. Mm -hmm. I think over the long term, I agree with uh, what Joseph and uh, uh, Vicky mentioned. It's really about the talent. I really welcome the recent you know, um, uh, policies on uh, lifting the, 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 the quota and the, the attracting the top talents to Hong Kong. I think that's really over the long term, that's the fundamental to Hong Kong and that will make this industry go to the next level. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think the policy address already got um, a lot of measure to attract talents. Yeah. yeah. And so I think thank you very much for joining our program today. And it's a very fruitful uh, discussion. Th thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.